Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Top to Bottom. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Drake mixtape, Dark Lane Demo Tapes. If any of you guys are new to this series, what we do is we take an album and I rank each song from worst to best, top to bottom. At the end of the video, I will give you guys my overall thoughts of the album, pairing that with a score. So without further ado, let's hop straight into the review. There are 14 songs on this album, and at the number 14 spot, we have From Florida With Love. And I'm actually not going to say anything about this track, because pretty much everything I would say about this song applies to the next one that comes up on this list, so... Whatever I say in the 13th spot, apply it to number 14, and that is exactly how I feel. The only thing I will say though is nobody wants to hear this shit. And in the number 13th spot, we have Losses. This song, along with From Florida With Love, are the most boring songs on the entire album. These are basically just filler tracks. The beat on this song sucks, it's so uninteresting, and Drake's rapping is so lazy. Overall, this song, Losses, along with the one I mentioned previously, they just shouldn't have been on this tape at all. You could remove them and all I see is an improvement. In number 12 spot, we have Demons. I will say that for one, the beat on this song isn't that bad. The chorus is also passable, but on the first verse, Drake does his, his ting accent and I hate it so much. Five Yo is one of the two features on this song and quite honestly, I don't want to hear him talking about nutting in girls' faces. And the other feature, Sasa Geek, I just don't care for their verse either. In the number 11 spot, we have Landed. This song is a little bit more aggressive than a lot of other songs that come up on this album. And even though it is more in your face, I actually find it more boring than a lot of other tracks. Like seriously, even though it's trying to be a little bit more aggressive, it just somehow puts me to sleep. And that's mainly attributed to the verses and the hook on this song that are just so uninteresting. In the number 10 spot, we have Pain 1993. And honestly, it actually pains me to put this one at this spot. I was expecting so much more from this song. The way Drake changed up his voice just so that he could be more compatible with Cardi, is executed so badly in my opinion. It's not enjoyable and his verse is just so gray. And the most disappointing part about this song and the reason why I hate the fact that I have to place it at this spot is Cardi's verse. And you guys might be thinking, huh, Brandon, of course you don't like Playboy Cardi. You would never listen to a mumble crapper. You would never do that. Well, recently I actually decided to check out Die Lit by Playboy Cardi and I really enjoy it. I think it's a really great album. And I was really looking forward to listening to this song because I was thinking to myself, man, you know, I, I just got onto Playboy Cardi and I really like Die Lit. So let's see what this is going to be about. And unfortunately, it's just a very mediocre performance. In the number nine spot, we have War. I will say that this is a pretty poor closer to the album. The beat on this song is whatever. It's just there. Drake decides to spit one super long verse and it's all right, I guess. But one thing that really rubs me the wrong way is he is still performing with his ting gimmicks and I just wish he would stop like ever since more life he's been putting on this fake fucking accent and I hate it I hate it so much because he does it so badly it's obviously so fake so artificial I just wish you would stop. In the number eight spot, we have Not You Too. That's what I thought when I saw the feature on this song. Chris Brown is featured on this song, but he's actually not very prominent on the track as he's kind of just in the background saying lines with Drake at the same time, but he's very faint. You can barely hear him, which I'm not complaining about because this world doesn't need any more Chris Brown music. Actually, this world doesn't need any more Chris Brown. Honestly, what I would say about this song is that it's really just a very inoffensive track and it is extremely forgettable. I wouldn't say that this song is bad. I'm more so just indifferent to it. I don't like it or dislike it. I find it to just not be really all that special. It kind of reminds me of some of the forgettable moments on albums like Views and Scorpion. If it comes up in the album, I won't skip it, but it is the definition of background music. Like, if I'm paying attention to the album, yeah, I would probably skip it. But if I'm just playing the album and it just passes by, yeah, I'll leave it on if I'm not paying attention. In the number seven spot, we have When To Say When. This song really sounds like a B cut from Scorpion. There are some nice high-pitched vocals placed throughout the song. Again, Drizzy is just spitting one really long verse and his flow is pretty nice. Overall, I would say that this track is okay, but I consider it kind of a bad and poor follow-up to Deep Pockets. In the number six spot, we have Two C Slide. Believe it or not, I actually used to not care about this song at all. I just thought it was really gimmicky I thought it was tacky, but over time I have kind of come to 
like it a little bit. It's definitely grown on me a little bit. I don't find it to be a bad song at all. I actually think it's really catchy. For example, the chorus and the post chorus is just stuck in my head. However, I will say that what holds this song back for me are the verses. They're nothing special at all. They're really kind of just there to fill up time to complement the chorus and the post chorus so that you can get to it quicker because those are the catchiest parts of the track. In the number five spot, we have Time Flies. This is a very laid back song. The beat on this one isn't too bad, although it is very subtle. Drake's verses are kind of boring. However, I will say that the chorus is quite catchy. And my favorite part of the song is actually the outro with all the weird vocal chops and pitch shifts. I find those parts to be really enjoyable and they actually kind of hold up the track for me. In the number four spot, I have Desires. First of all, I just want to say that there are some really weird and questionable lyrics on this song. For example, on the chorus, Drake says, I should have put you somewhere where no one could find you. Mansion out in the sticks with nothing around you. KE Texas, Dallas, Texas, you know, a different environment. I find these lyrics a bit problematic because it highlights Drake's insecurities when it comes to being in relationships. The way he sort of tries to shelter his partner as much as possible, making sure that they don't know anybody, that they're not surrounded by anything that Drake considers inappropriate. It highlights a very insecure and unhealthy way that he approaches relationships. It reminds me a lot of songs like Hotline Bling, and especially songs like Child's Play. I really don't like this side of Drake. I really hate when he puts lyrics in songs that paint him out to be this incredibly insecure and overprotective boyfriend. And you guys might be saying, well, it sounds like you're painting this song to be really, really bad. It sounds like you're not going to enjoy it. Well, actually, that's not the case at all, because regardless of the really questionable lyrics throughout this song, I still like the way it sounds, and especially the chorus. Again, even with those problematic lyrics, I can't help but just love the way Drake sings. I know, I know, I know. His singing on this one is really nice. And I know I just mentioned an example of a song like Child's Play, for example, where Drake sort of portrays himself as this really unhealthy boyfriend to be in a relationship with. But even that song, I like it just because of the way it sounds. I find it to be a really catchy song. It's just, I would never agree with what Drake is saying. To speak on the beat on this song, I really like it. I like the feeling it gives off. And I was actually really surprised that I like the future feature on this song. I'm not really a big fan of future, so I was really surprised to see that I liked his performance. However, another thing that I want to highlight is that along with the lyrics that kind of make me wince a little bit, there are also some lines that are just struggle bar like, for example, Drake says, how you going vegan but still beefing with me again? Like, <sighs> really? But one more time before I stop talking about this song. Yes, some of the lyrics are really fucking terrible, but overall, I like this song. I can't help but feel like I just, I really enjoy it. In the number three spot, we have D4L. This song is way funner and overall just a better hard song than Landed. I really love the choruses on this song. I find them really enjoyable with Young Thug, Drake, and Future going into a bunch of different vocal inflections. The beat on this is hard and Drake's first verse is actually great. Future's verse is really nice too. Again, I like another Future verse. I also quite like Young Thug's heavy ad-libs that are placed in the background. Overall, I would say that this song just goes hard and is a huge highlight to the album. In the number two spot, we have the intro track, Deep Pockets. I would say that this is a very solid intro to this mixtape. I actually really enjoyed the production on this track. Initially, I thought maybe it was muddy because of bad mixing, because this is a demo tape after all, but I feel like maybe that was actually done intentionally because there are other songs on this album that are produced way better. But again, I really like the production on this track. It gives it sort of a lo-fi aesthetic, which is sort of weird for Drake. I quite like the chorus on this. I think Drake's singing isn't that bad. The verses aren't anything too crazy either. They're pretty simple with Drake flowing over them really nicely. And I would say that the overall atmosphere of this track was executed pretty nicely. And finally, at the number one spot, we have Chicago Freestyle. There is some very nice mellow singing from, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, Giveon on the chorus. 
In fact, I would actually say it's maybe the best moment on the album. In terms of Drake's performance, his delivery is a lot softer. It reminds me of songs like Marvin Room and Star 67. The beat on this is very nice and spacey. Drake actually pays homage to Eminem's song Superman from the Eminem show on the pre-chorus, which I think is really fucking cool. Also, Drake's rhyming and wordplay on this song is really good. There was one specific line that stood out to me, and when I got this bar, I was like, Fuck, that's actually really fucking good. Whether or not he wrote this bar, Drake says, Pistol on Jay for survival, a lot of people gunning for the title. You know, Pistol on Jay, Jay-Z, a lot of people gunning for the title because Jay-Z owned title. I thought that was a really good bar, and when I picked up on that, I thought that was dope. Overall, I just love how laid back this track is. Even though Drake is coming off a little bit softer in this song, he somehow sounds very confident. And that is the reason why it is my favorite song on the whole album. So yeah, that has been Dark Lane Demo Tapes by Drake, top to bottom, from worst song to best song. And as you can tell, it was extremely hit or miss. This album is a really big mixed bag. And initially, the first few times I listened to it, just kind of in the background, I thought maybe I like this. Originally, I thought that I was going to score this more on the positive end. I knew that I wasn't going to love it. I knew that I wasn't even going to think that this is a, a good project. But I at least thought that I was going to come out of this liking it a little bit. But then when I actually sat down to read through the lyrics, take down the notes, and really pay attention to the music, I realized that the majority of this album is very mediocre for Drake. There were definitely highlights on this album. There were quite a few songs on this project that I am definitely going to come back to. I would say that the majority of the first half of this mixtape is pretty solid, not that bad. But where this mixtape suffers is the second half. There are some horrible, boring filler tracks placed all over the second half. I would say that the only song that I liked on the second half of this mixtape was D4L. The songs that I would come back to on this project are Chicago Freestyle, Deep Pockets, D4L, Desires, Time Flies, and maybe 2C Slide. There were some good moments, there were some solid tracks, but overall I would say that the majority of this album is either okay or just straight up garbage shit that I'm not going to come back to. And I think that I slightly lean to the side that says that this is a bad mixtape. I wouldn't say that I'm indifferent to this, I would say that this is kind of bad in my opinion. So with that being said, when it comes to scoring the album, I gotta give this a 4.5. Really disappointing from Drake because a few videos ago I said that I was going to review this mixtape before I had actually listened to it and I was hoping that this was going to be good. Man, the last few projects, the last few albums including this mixtape that Drake has been dropping recently have just been so mediocre, so uninteresting to me and it's sad because I really like albums like Take Care and Nothing Was The Same and if you're reading this it's too late. I find those to be really solid Drake projects but when it came to like Views and Scorpion and now with Dark Lane demo tapes I'm extremely sad to say that Drake has just not put anything out that I personally liked in quite a while. I know that he has a new album coming out in the summer and all I can hope for is that that's going to be a lot better than this. Because if the quality is the same as this mixtape or worse, I, I don't know where Drake is going to go in his career. We need something good because it's been a fucking minute since Drake has put out anything that has been decent. But yeah, overall, as I said, I am pretty disappointed with this mixtape and all I can hope is that Drake puts out something way better in the summer. But with that being said, I am going to wrap this video up here. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you smack the like button. If you want to stay up to date with my content, please be sure to subscribe. I'll have my last video in the corner. If you haven't checked that out already, definitely make sure to check it out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. Peace out.